Hi, Countess Narva and Dracovan, Lord and Emperor of the Dracovan Empire, and welcome! Today is going to be special, I'm going to talk about something new. I ran a poll on Twitter, so anytime I finish up talking about a role-playing game system, I will run a poll on Twitter. This one, people voted, and we win with D20 Modern! So let's talk about D20 Modern, then. Alright, well, D20 Modern is actually based upon the 3rd edition of Dungeon Dragon. There have been two editions of 3rd edition, this is based on the original, and so a lot of the roles will reflect that. You're going to see similarities to both 5th edition Dungeons & Dragons and Pathfinder, since Pathfinder was directly based on 3.5, the extension on 3.0. So it's a, like, nephew or a cousin to this system. Anyway, so one of the major things I did want to mention that's different about this system is action points. That's the first one I did want to mention because they talk about it very early on in the book. Action points are something you can use for a variety of things. The main one you're going to use it for is after you roll a d20 roll, before your DM says you failed or succeeded, you can roll a d6 by spending an action point and add it to that roll. Again, you're going to do this before you find out if you had failure or not, but afterwards you can sort of give a burst, say like, oh, I needed a little extra to that roll. Action points can also be used on a variety of abilities your character may have. Your, an ability your character have, whether it's a feat or a talent, I'll talk about those later, it will say whether you need an action point to use it. So let's talk about the ability scores in D20 Modern. The way you choose ability scores in D20 Modern is chosen in three different ways. Well, one of three you would do. The first one is 4D6, take away one dice, and arrange those numbers down the line. That's one of the basic ways. It's one of the ways that has sort of evolved away from it, but it is one that you have an option for. There, of course, is a point by system. I've talked about these in both D&D, 5th Edition, and Pathfinder, that there's a point by system here. D20 Modern had one here. It, it would give you 25 points, and it gave value for all these all the ability scores you could possibly have. 8 was 0, and everything else cost you. They also gave a standard array. It's, in fact, very similar to the standard array that 5th Edition Dungeons & Dragons has. You got a 15, 14, 13, 12, 10, and an 8. Now, the ability scores are exactly the same as those two other systems. Strength, Dexterity, Con, Intelligence, Wisdom, Charisma. All the same. And the modifiers work exactly the same, too. You would take the score, subtract 10 from it, whatever number you have left, divide it by 2. If it's a positive number, you round down. If it's a negative number, round up. And then you figure out what your ability score modifier would be. Now, ability scores can change in D20 Modern. They do list a couple of ways. Poisons and diseases and other special abilities can give temporary changes to ability scores. As you level up, every four levels, starting at fourth level, of course, you gain plus one to an ability score of your choice, and changing your age category. Becoming older often removes physicals and adds mentals. Now let's talk about the classes that are in D20 Modern, now that we've got our basics for ability scores established. Now there are six basic class, base classes in D20 Modern, and they are based upon each one of the ability scores. There's the strong one, which is based around athletics and melee attacks. The fast one, which is all about dexterity, reflexes, maneuverability, range attacks. The tough one, it's all about being healthy, fit, having a high stamina, having a great endurance. There's the smart hero, that's all about higher reasoning and skill. There's the dedicated hero, which is about being dedicated to some kind of cause, some kind of ideal, oftentimes being like pushing towards the abilities of investigation and healing and things like that that are very force field and based. And there's the charismatic hero. The charismatic hero is the person that makes a lot of friends, that is the fast talker of the group, is the person that negotiates for them. Each of these heroes, as I said, is based upon a different ability score. Now, of course, just as in Pathfinder and Dungeons and Dragons, you can multi-class. You can take levels in other heroes. So I could be a tough hero and then take a level of smart hero if I want to get some brains into my brawn. What you're going to be looking at is later on, you're going to look to the advanced classes. Each of these base classes only has 10 levels. You can level from 1 to 20. So, of course, by the time you're getting to the end of it, you're going to probably want to be thinking about an advanced class to take. And I will talk about advanced classes later on, because the book talks about them later on anyway. So there's a chart in the book which gives you a lot of great base information. It tells you how much experience you gain in each of every level. It tells you what your max ranks are in a class skill, and your max ranks in a cross-class skill. Now, this is something that went away after the third edition, but I will talk about them when I get to skills to explain these a little better, what the 
class skills and cross-class skills mean. Just know that whatever max ranks you would have in either of these is explained right here. Part also talks about what kind of feats, what levels you gain feats, and what levels you gain ability score on them. It will let you know when you get a feat, when you get an ability score. The thing about these, this chart here, the information, is we're assuming your character is going to be a human. Humans get a bonus feat. So humans get an extra skill point per level. That's why there's an extra feat at first level included in here. If you want to use a race from 3.0, 3.5, you can. You can use another base race if you want to. It would have to be allowed by your DM. It's an option that he or she can use, that they can allow you to be another race. You would just have to look up the stats for it and appropriately apply it to your character. So let's talk about the basics of the class entry. Each of the classes have an entry. It first will tell you the ability score relevant to that class. Then it will tell you the hit dice your class would have for that, what kind of dice you'd be rolling for your hit points. Or taking the average if, if your DM is having you do that. That's a little more modern aspect nowadays. It will tell you the action points your character gets for that class. How many you get at first level, how they progress as you level up. It will tell you your class skills. What skills are considered class skills. Everything else is cross class. That's a little basics about skills that I can give you right now very easily. It will also list any starting feats you get. There's of course is going to be a chart in here, which I will mention right now. The chart will have whatever level you are, it will tell you your base attack, your base saves, it will tell you what, when you get feats and talents, which I'll explain in a little bit in a minute, it will tell you what your defensive bonus is and your reputation will be. These are all things I'm going to talk about a little later, but this is where the information is stored. Then the entry will of course talk about talents and feats. The talents, it gives a list of talent trees you can take. There's special abilities specific to your class that you can take. It gives trees of talents, which means like these are talents that you have to sort of take in order to gain more higher higher abilities, and it tells you which trees you have access to. It will also tell you a list of bonus feats you have access to that you can choose from. So not only do you just get a bonus feat, you get a bonus feat from a list that you get to choose from for your heroes. That's it for today. I went over some of the basics from D20 Modern. I defined what the system was. I talked about ability scores, choosing them for your character in, in D20 Modern. And I talked about the basics of classes. There's a little bit more information I want to go over about classes that I'll finish up next time, and I'll start moving into the other section of the book and finishing up and continuing character creation in D20 Modern. So if you need questions, comments, anything you want to say, anything you think I left out, please leave in the comments below. Please like, share, and subscribe. It shows your support for the channel, the Empire and the work I do. And until the next time, I bid you farewell.